Can we have a call to order, please? Can we have a roll call? Yes. Uh, Ms. Emkage. She's on order. Ms. Hubbard. Present. Mr. Jacobs. Dr. Sophia. Mr. Marshall. Present. Ms. Mendelson. Mr. Newman. Here. Dr. O'Donnell. Ms. Shereen. Shereen. Dr. Smith. Here. Ms. Spencer. Mr. James. Very good. We have the pleasure of being here. really briefly about the volunteer um, agreement that's in the packet. Um, you know, Facebook, it's the bane of uh, PAC's existence and it's the savior of so many pets at the same time. Um, uh, it's an incredible resource and um, I, I think that the policies need to be really careful not to um, restrict the freedom of speech of the people who are volunteers, um, the people who are fosters, the people who are in the rescue community. Um, there are lines in there about things that cannot be said on social media sites. Um, You know, there's comments. This is definitely an improvement from what we had several months ago, where it was very, very vague. But there's still some troubling things in it. Um, stating that you cannot post derogatory comments about PAC on any social media sites. Things like questions about specific animals should not be shared on unofficial accounts or websites. Um, you know, questions about animals, that's, that's how we find out what we need to know to, from other volunteers be able to network these animals, especially the STR animals, which we as a community are being asked to find their homes so that they don't languish here in the shelter. And, um, you know, there's case history that you cannot restrict the freedom of speech um, or threaten to restrict it, um, threaten, you know, to terminate people's ability to volunteer uh, because of things that they say, and um, I hope that you guys can address that and make sure that, that the language does not put a chilling effect on anyone's freedom of speech, and that we don't have to deal with lawsuits because of, you know, what somebody says on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. And that is on the agenda, so we'll be talking about that. Because I have some questions myself. Um, is there anybody else that would like to address? You can speak if you would like. You can talk first. I'm, I'm going to save it for um, the session call. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. With that, I'll move to one of the first board of uh, the first agenda item on the management's report. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, the, the committee, there's three items that you found at your station and when you uh, sat down on my station with your seat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, the March 2015 operation report, the, the board of supervisors uh, report from the committee, the sign the report, and the letter written to the governor of the state of Arizona uh, from the committee, which failed to get into the, the packet. We were supposed to get in the packet, and we missed those three items. I don't know if it's before that uh, little oversight there we're here for you to look at today. The uh, review today in, in uh, most indicated, I believe. But the uh, Board of Supervisors report dated March 19, 2015, is in the packet of information to, uh, to demonstrate that it has been written and submitted. To the, to the, to the county, and it's been submitted to uh, county administrator's office for inclusion on the uh, first uh, uh, the most opportune uh, advisor, or board of supervisors meeting uh, in the near future. And I do get to receive any feedback on the, which one that will be at this point. But as you may know, they are going through budget hearings and other things with the county years. So, uh, it, it is, uh, has been submitted for inclusion on the next possible meeting. Uh, yeah, next item is the letter to the city of governor uh, regarding the Catholic Attorney General Sanctuary. That's the letter that you also have in your packet for your consideration and review um, uh, as, as you wish. If you have any questions on it, certainly we'll be glad to respond to those. Um, the next item uh, on the manager report has to do with the city and town discussion of this is continuing. We met again today uh, with the, the town managers and the city managers and for their representative and uh, the county administrator, Mr. Huckleberry, was there along with a couple of his deputy administrators and, Mr., uh, and Dr. Garcia from the health department. And the discussion continues. Um, and I'm looking at this only because I wrote down what I wanted to, to capture. And they met this morning. Uh, action items that came out of that meeting include normalizing funding mechanisms to continue shelter services as is. Uh, very interested in continuing our, our service support in the shelter in particular. Increasing licensing efforts, uh, both uh, assisting PAC from their location as well as maybe taking and, and expanding the capacity by using city and town resources, uh, going to libraries and other things we talked about. about out outlets to secure or, or buy an individual license. Um, and, but there's a lot of work to be done in that because of the details associated with issuing a, a dog license. Uh, and um, the Tucson um, indicated today they're looking for funding to support and to more fully support Spain here uh, and increase in that. And, Miss Barney was there as well, so if I say anything out of school, she would correct me with the yardstick after. Um, and they they provided their input to Mr. Huckleberry on the, the request for additional field officers today in that meeting, and he is considering that, and he will provide his response to the committee at his uh, earliest opportunity once he had, uh, produces that and considers it and has an opportunity to whatever he needs to do with it. Can you back up? I didn't catch that last part about the field officers. Uh, the, the, the citizen town provided, in addition to providing written input uh, to the county prior to this meeting today, there was a full fledged discussion among the managers and the representatives of Mr. Huckleberry about it. And uh, he will produce his, his uh, feedback to the committee uh, his as soon as opportunity to provide that feedback to you. Um, And a couple other items that aren't on the agenda. One is that last month's meeting, I reported that staff had received feedback from two jurisdictions regarding the enforcement officer request, when in reality, I had forgotten that in addition to the city of Tucson, Miranda had provided written uh, communication. Oral Valley had also provided feedback on that, that topic, which was on the, on the agenda last month. And I failed to acknowledge that the Oral Valley is being responsive to the, to the continues to be responsive and supportive of the, the back position. The other uh, couple of items that we talked about last month 
and do a couple of ordinances that, that uh, you provided your positions on through your action. Even County Code 6.04.100, which is the, uh, the modification to the advisory committee. As you may recall, we, uh, we proposed removing that seat, the other seat, and replacing the fair seat with the PFFL, PPFL, PPFL seat. I'm losing my ability to talk to acronym, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, that, that will be presented to the Board of Supervisors at their May 5th meeting. And then there, the other item was the City of Tucson representative appointment will be presented to the Board of Supervisors at their April 21st meeting, which is next Tuesday, to bring that new member on board. That completes my report. Uh, subject to your questions or, or comments. Uh, Mr. James, could you go back from the first statement, something where the city said that they were willing to work with PAC as it is? Something like that. I, I didn't get that. When, when I didn't want to it wasn't the city only. Uh -huh. What it is, is uh, the jurisdiction are, were all in agreement that we want to normalize funding, a uh, funding mechanism. How do we pay for shelter services to maintain it as we're doing it, at least as we're doing it now? Right, they're not talking about funding. I was thinking it was meaning that they were funding it as it was before. No, no. Okay. not but as it, was, but as but it as is. is correct. Yes, ma'am. That's good news. At, at least as is. They, no, everyone continues to say they're not interested in an in operation that utilizes pets either. What, what can we do and how can we do it better? And how can we afford it? There were several, uh, several options thrown out there from, from special revenue districts to uh, other options. So. Good to hear. Good. Um, the uh, individual that is the representative from the city of Tucson, is she here? Yes. Yes. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Yvette Hurley. I work for the Tucson Fire Department. Okay. Nice to meet you. Maybe I'll see you next month. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, was there something more? No? Oh, I thought you needed more. No, 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 no problem. No side. Uh, <clears throat> okay, as you indicated, the letters are, are in the packet. Uh, at least when you pass them out. These actually already went, so it's not like there's much input that we can have. So they're gone. And, uh, I, I assume that eventually then I'll be scheduled to, I guess, give the, the report to them. The under, uh, you know, the one thing that I passed up waiting for Nancy was what? The minutes. The, the minutes? Okay. I, I don't want to forget that. The, uh, under old business, the county administration response to the committee's request to add additional field officers and shelf under the IGA. Isn't that what you were just talking about? That's a, the feedback from the meeting was uh, was what I was talking about, but it was the same issue, yes, sir. So we'll be getting that. Okay, the volunteer policy and partnership agreement. Now, is and I see that that's in the packet, but is that uh, for us to just to comment on? Is that it? Is, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Barney for her feedback input. Primarily, we, we provided ahead of time so you could look at it and give feedback. We did want to say that I think we all know this has been an ongoing process. This is several iterations in, and we did just as a group want to say that we're really appreciative of the direction that we're all going, and I feel that this is more because it's a continuation of where we've been at and something to solidify so everybody's everybody's clear, but I feel that the, the dialogue, the interactions have been um, for the most part, very supportive and very respectful, and so we're appreciative of that. And then also, uh, the draft that we gave you guys, this team has provided some feedback to communications, or the one our communications department drafted this with feedback. Um, and we provided some feedback, so there are even some issues that we have with the language that's in here, and that's certainly something, obviously, that we can, we can talk about, so we can answer any questions okay. or, or take down notes about your feedback. Well, there's actually some of, some of what I was already addressed, and even by Mr. Pope, but um, as, as I was looking through it, where, where it talks about individuals or a volunteer making a commentary about whether it's about PAC or, or just what's going on, and just in general, not being able to do that on a, any social media site. I don't quite understand that. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's a specific bullet point you're talking about. We're certainly not trying to restrict the ability to discuss anything. Anything. We want to make sure that information is accurate and um, and it's respectful. And so even the, the bullet point that Mr. Pope brought up before about questions being approved ahead of time, we're not sure that we agree with that one either or understand that piece. And so we think that there certainly is some language that could be refined and clarified. Because we don't want to make sure that all, that all information is stopped or because of the specific one, it's it, it's not enumerated, so it's only a dot. Yeah. <laughs> um, questions about specific animals should not be shared on unofficial accounts or websites without first receiving permission from PAC. Now, the unofficial website is the official the website that gets 90 some percent of the dogs and cats adopted, and so and that would just preclude that from happening. Right. And certainly, yeah. we're in agreement about that particular bullet point. We're not sure what. Uh, the intent was there, so I want to clarify that with our comm team, but so we don't want to restrict the ability to ask any questions or have any information shared about the pets without permission first. And, and you know, and I'm sure you, uh, there is a lot of, a lot of case law on that. Some of it was already on the, on the site. I noticed someone posted some of that, and, and it's old case law that doesn't allow for a shelter to be able to tell a volunteer because they criticize the, the site, or the, uh, let's say, pack in this case to say, well, you can't come back here anymore because you've criticized this. Although I haven't really seen much of that lately anyway, so I, I think what we're doing is we're opening up with this, a can of worms that need not even be opened, with some of the languages in here. Um, I'll say something yeah. And like I said at the beginning, I think we agreed this sort of started some time ago when there was some more concern about what was being said, right. and I think the tone has changed dramatically. Right. I still think it's important to have something written so there's clarification. And we want to make sure more than anything that information is accurate, because I have seen some inaccurate information, which is which is harmful for all of us mm -hmm. and what we're trying to accomplish. And then also things that are, are personal or derogatory. We don't want to shut down anyone's ability to question um, how are we doing, are we doing things right. We don't want to take that away. We just want to make sure that it's respectful of the of the people, it's not personal, things like that. And so I think we're trying to get to the same place and maybe this language shouldn't land there, yeah. but I don't think we're trying to, to stir up or take away as much as what maybe is perceived. So will we still get an opportunity, like all of us, I would suggest that we look at it more closely and say, just highlight things that we have an issue with? Yes, please. I, I had a question or concern, <clears throat> and thank you, sir, for speaking about your concerns. I was curious is if, if anybody knows if there's a difference between nonprofit volunteers and government volunteers, government volunteers that work for the government. <coughs> is the volunteer a volunteer? Does anybody know? Okay. Well, it, it would occur to me that if a volunteer is so unhappy with the organization that they would go into public media and bash Pima County Animal Care, as I've seen it bash before, they shouldn't be a volunteer. They, they have no business volunteering there. And that's just my opinion. I mean, there, I agree with Kristen, there has to be a way to put something in there that keeps people who, are, who say that they're dedicated to the animals, and by posting that, they do harm. You do harm to the organization, you do harm to the animals. Mm -hmm. so, and that was just what I wanted to say. I noticed, I noticed you nodding your head, and this is a little out of order, but I know there's a difference between the two in the sense that a public organization has different uh, rules it has to abide by versus a private one, nonprofit. So here we are. A government organization is, is covered by, also can be covered by the Whistleblower Act in the sense that um, if I choose to say something, that particular portion of the government uh, applies to me. I can say what I want with, without, uh, without being afraid to be um, sanctioned in some way. But I have to be able to prove what, what about a situation that's like um, an employee that works for the county uh, is doing something and a volunteer decides they're not doing a good job and is rude and disrespectful to the employee? And if this is a situation that would continue, that person shouldn't be allowed to volunteer because that's, that's causing ca causing problems within the organization. Right. That's, that's different. I mean, a volunteer is no different in the respect of a staff person where they can be terminated just like a staff person can be terminated. Sure, for just fun. There should be a reason for for cutting whether a volunteer can come here or not, just, like you, would, just like you would uh, an employee. employee. So the just cause elements would, would apply just as well for, for a, a volunteer. 
which then leads me then to some things that I've heard, uh, and, and I wanted to bring that up here because uh, I don't have the specifics on it or anything, but we did have a volunteer say some very bad things to some of the people, someone that was here trying to adopt the dog, calling her a uh, something blankety blankety blank. So it was basically uh, cussing her out. And I don't have the specifics on it, but when you have a situation like that, that hurts us all. This, whether it would be an employer or whether it would be a volunteer, that hurts the, that hurts the mission. And in this particular case, my understanding is it just happened to be a county supervisor that they did it to. So, so now that that's a person that is affecting our budget, our PAC's budget. And so um, those are the things that to me what just cause would apply to that volunteer, even though they might have every so passionate about the dogs and cats, but they might have overstepped their bounds, things like that. So that would that would hurt. Well, I think customer service is critical. Correct. I mean, even if you don't think someone should have an animal, there is a way to say it without being offensive mm -hmm. and, and being unprofessional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to be asking more about that. I think Christine probably would know. Do you know? Because I don't think things like that should just be like, oh, yes. Well, and I, I'm i sure that the HR department um, and the supervisors and the managers all have plenty of things to do, but um, one thing to consider would be to um, have maybe some sort of due process as well for a volunteer that perhaps misunderstood something or got a little bit emotional over something and maybe a counseling session of some kind and reminding them of the mission and of customer service before we just say, oh, you just can't work, you can't be here anymore. And um, my other two cents about this is that it, I think it's really, really important to be clear about how we're going to treat each other, both how the staff treats the volunteers and how the volunteer treats the staff. Um, and I think we're all on the same page about, I don't think the wording really nailed it just yet, but um, I really think it, you could probably say, if you're going to talk about PAC, it's important to be professional and respectful, but they're still free to express their opinion. So they can disagree with something that happened or be unhappy about something that happened, but to be respectful and professional. And that doesn't inhibit anybody's First Amendment rights by requiring them to be professional and respectful in their wording. Do we have? I do. Do we have a date when this is a due date for this? I don't know. Do we have a due date when this is going to be given to us? It seems like it's been on the table for quite a while. <laughs> we would like to wrap it up, if <laughs> possible, sooner rather than later. Um, but if if you could provide. A, your comments and, and feedback. I don't know the best way that you want this done. If you just want it sent to us, if you want it formalized here so everyone sees it, you you can sort of decide how you want that done. I'm happy to just take it and, and put that together should, and present next time. Put it all together. So if everybody in the committee has commentaries on this, uh, funnel it to Mr. James, and then you know we'll, we'll send it as a group over as we look at that. Whether even if it's just like taking what you see here and highlighting it and having a question, you know. Mark by it, like not, that's what I would be doing. Or you can comment, whatever. You know. But I, I think it's best to funnel we'll fun it into one, and then we'll give it to Mr. James, and we'll just give it to you. Do it that way. Okay. I'm sorry, Chair, sure. members of the community, do you want to, uh, at your pleasure, set a, a date to have that into the, the, the meeting? I'll pull that right to the uh, on that date so we can keep this moving forward. I don't know if I have to wait for a meeting for that. Can you ship it to my before office? This, how about before the uh, one week before the next meeting? Okay. So that would be. May 14th. May 14th? That's right. Okay, is that okay? May 14th? May 14th is the next meeting, right? May 21st. Oh, okay. Next meeting. The 14th would be the date. Uh, yeah. Of course, we'll take take it all the way up until a vote. And I'm speaking to the staff here. Anytime you have comments on anything we're doing, if you have any proposed changes, please provide them to us at that moment. When you think about it, and we'll get it into the right hands and consider it and move forward. But in this case, on before the 14th, we'll make sure 
they get shared in a good fashion. Um, they all, I know uh, they will take what they've heard tonight and already start working on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next uh, issue yeah, is up to. I'm oh, sorry. If I may, um, Ms. Ness, Ms. Ness, Ms. Here. Okay, Ms. Ness, we're waiting for you. We were going to. But um, <coughs> you had something to say about the minutes before we did a motion to accept yeah, the minutes. Um, apparently, I said something about the animals. You said uh, feet, feet bleeding. It was. Um, On page. On the case that I was talking about, the animal that was sick, uh, the person that somebody called in about. What's the page at the bottom? Two. Two. Okay. And I, instead of feet, it should say mouth. Because the feet, obviously, the teeth were bleeding. And as somebody pointed out, teeth don't bleed, you know, but if they're cracked or it was, a, it was a major infection in the mouth. And, um, and so um, that does need to. To be changed, please. Yeah. So, and then I've got some things. Just, yeah, then cast away, which is different. But I did have the correction. Actually, instead of teeth, I should have said mouth. Okay, so, with, with that correction, do we have a motion to accept the minutes? Dated March 19th, 2015. Second. All in favor? All opposed? There's none. So it's yes, sir. Chairman of the committee, if, if I might, a point of order here is we, we cannot change the minutes to something that wasn't said. But we can we can review the minutes to make sure what we said there. We can also include the clarification in the minutes for this meeting of, of what you're saying. Thank you. That would be either or will uh, make it clear. <coughs> so do we need any more? No, sure. We're done? Okay. All right. Um, that covers all the bases of the <laughs> we, we already went by the uh, castaway. So if you haven't, do you have some commentary? There's a letter that went to the governor on castaway. Do you want to comment on that? I see that Ms. Sherman called me today and she had some questions. Um, so. Um, okay. Um, she said that um, in January, when the call first went out, an officer had indicated that the animals needed to be checked by a vet, and she wanted to know why no citations were given. And she said, you know, "It's a quote that always seems with this particular organization, there there are no citations given out at the time that an investigator goes goes out." So. Um, that was your question well, on that? Stop, stop mm -hmm. though, on that. Mm -hmm. That was actually something that I brought up, uh, that usually normal individuals, when you find a, a, an animal that had something wrong, you know, like no water or whatever, they get a citation. And then that you still give them time to fix it. And in this case, they weren't. And remember you said you were gonna check on that as to why they uh, or the lady who was speaking, I forgot her name, the uh, enforcement officer, why sh we weren't getting, why these individuals didn't get a citation, but other people do. <coughs> Which is the same thing that Ms. Shereen's right. bringing up here. Right. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, we, had, we did discuss this, uh, and we went through a few scenarios with, with uh, Supervisor Tente, and she explained that the, and that the answer to the question is, Generically, it, it depends on the severity and how uh, what the situation is, whether or not the citation will give, be given uh, initially, or if the warning will be given, or if the 24 hours or longer time period will be given, uh, depending on the, the nature of the issue uh, that they're dealing with, whether it's medical issue, need wet care, uh, or uh, it's way past needing it, it's time to cite it, and then down and move, move there. So there's a continuum of response uh, that they use uh, and that they um, historically and uh, by precedent and in uh, what's in the best interest of the animal at the time to take with each of these cases. And as I recall for this particular case that generally they were there, the animals were not in such a state where they also felt it was equal to cite citation event at that moment, but 
that chair was kind of needed to happen and gave them a time period which to do that and they comply with those. Um, and, and that, so that, that's generally what happens and in that case, I remember that happening for the, the dog in particular. And uh, I understand that the horses were either under that care or the sheriff required them to uh, get uh, five horses specifically to look at again. Uh, or uh, whatever, we'll get the vet care, uh, another vet care check on uh, five horses specifically at that time in January. And uh, Officer Tenke did say she would uh, go back and go check it. I did not follow up with her on that, and I think she's still in that. Did you ever find out, because I saw that letter that came from Mr. Huckleberry that was sent to the uh, was it, I believe Secretary of Agriculture or for mm -hmm. the state of Arizona. Did he ever get an answer back from that? Not from my mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, I just was curious. Did we agree last time to send to have someone go with an objective veterinarian not involved in this to go check on horses and see what they find that they do not agree? There was something to that effect that we did, and I don't know what came of that. It was uh, Dr. Uh, Sophia. I have some information on that. Um, I guess Ms. Shorty did contact Dr. Sophia, and Dr. Sophia said she could not be considered neutral. Um, but maybe her partner or an associate could go out. I don't. I think anybody was contacted at Dr. Sophia's practice about going out. Um, that was another question that Ms. Sharon said. I was, I mean, it says here a, a neutral volunteer veterinarian go out, but um, I know we, that Ms. Sharon said you've made a request to the Sheriff's Department that they review this with possibly another vet going out to, to evaluate the situation, or if this is only based upon our request. We contacted the sheriff's office with our request or Ms. Empty. Yeah. No, you go ahead. Ms. Empty, the mm -hmm. chair members of the committee is, is uh, I recall the committee made a motion I, and I looked at that before I actually went out and did the work. Uh, that the that the staff request of the sheriff to go back and take uh, a, a a veterinarian and invite our staff to go with them and back up to the professional treasurer. Based upon that motion and that request, I did submit a request mm -hmm. to uh, the Sheriff's Department, advise them of the committee's motion and, and desire. And at this point, we've not heard any, I have not heard any feedback as, uh, as far as any staff did. It was, it was, it was uh, staff comply with your motion. Oh, that my, my question was was just going to be. I wish we had somebody in law enforcement here because if if, this, if the um, animal care center and the sheriff's department has found out that as has stated that there's no case, could we go? Can we actually go out there with a the veterinarian? Or can they go out there with a the veterinarian when they've already decided that there's no problem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the closest right here. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Hubbard, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, that would be a law enforcement question, but there's, there's due process issues and harassment concerns right. that uh, may play into this. And, uh, the sheriff did a thorough investigation, uh, they felt, and uh, further action will be their call. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sanitash, do you have anything more on that? That's, that, that pretty much answered it. And I've got, I guess, the letter that went to the governor's office here, and. And um, I'm assuming that the, did the video go as well? To the governor? Yes. No. Okay. I didn't send the video. Okay, because it's, it's in the letter and the video. video. Okay, so no video was provided to this office to send the, okay. this force. I sent it. Oh, you sent it, so no video was provided to you. Okay. I would have needed a, a link of, or something. But even then, uh, since it was sent, in this particular case, it was sent hard copy. Okay. The old, the old fashioned way. Thank you very much. <coughs> that would be snail mail, right? Snail mail. Snail mail. <laughs> okay, the 
Housing with the Animal with the Ajo Animal Care Facility. I, I briefly spoke um, with you both about, about that. There was uh, one dog, uh, Michael, or his name was Mike. He was there in July. Um, he disappeared from on the, off the radar, and then he came back. Uh, shows him arrival at Ajo now under the name Michael instead of Mike on 4-3. And he's with the same number. So I was wondering if we could get that checked to see if, was he adopted or what, what actually occurred with that. Because if he wasn't adopted and he just disappeared, then something's kind of uh, weird about that. What happened to the dog? And then actually, one more question on that. If, if in fact he was adopted, assuming that he was, and he came back as Michael, why wouldn't he be brought here? He already spent like eight months there, and then he was adopted for a short time, and then brought back. He should probably not have to spend another. I mean, obviously they don't want him not. He was there a long time, so it's costing. It's costing taxpayers. It costs the dog a lot of time. To be, well, there's way you all know the reasons even better than I. Why he probably shouldn't be there. And then there's Charlie. He's a chi, and he's been there since 2-9. So that was one of the ones I thought we were going to bring back. So if you can please check into that. Let's see like why he wouldn't be brought back. Can you give me their info? Yes, it's right here. I'll give it to you. <coughs> give it to you. Okay, the other um, ways to shorten duration time for confiscation cases, that's been kind of been on our old business, but we're going to talk to you. Be are asked to speak maybe someone in legal as to what can we do as a shelter, what do they need, why should we hold animals for them because their cases are being, whether they're just being elongated or they're getting uh, extensions or whatever. Because the dog shouldn't have to be held. I mean, you can make a case without the dog, unless it's for a reason of fattening it up or something like that. The chairman of the committee, I'll, I'll refer that to Kristen and her staff. I don't know if we're talking about our legal system about breaking that code. Is there chairman of the committee I don't have a specific question, but I just want to reiterate that we're and um, the plan has been to set up a meeting with our new director of veterinary services and our county attorneys. Uh, but as you probably know, we have uh, one vet right now that's able to do any of our work. So Dr. Wilcox is doing all of our surgeries, all of our rounds, all of our vet care. And so um, unfortunately, this is one thing that hasn't happened. Our vet, our additional vet position is posted right now. We don't have someone yet who uh, has applied that is qualified and can start right now, but we have our fingers crossed that we have uh, someone good just around the corner that we can bring in, and then hopefully also Dr. Lilly will, Dr. Will, will be back soon. But right now, um, I'm not adding it. And, Dr. Uh, Lilly will be back? Is she back? She's off on FMLA? She's off on leave right now. She, but hopefully we'll be back soon. So I, I can ask hopefully that we can keep it on the agenda though, because it is it is still on. So I don't know how you well, I'll leave it, we'll leave it on that, because, and if you have any, uh, if you'd like anybody else, but I'd like to ask some questions if you do have a meeting like that, because when you are putting on a case, it's kind of interesting to me, uh, the need for the dog. I mean, the vet's going to have certain questions, you're going to have certain questions, but then is there any going to be anybody else there that has actually put any cases on, I guess, that has prepared any cases and done that when they're responding to you? Probably not. And so that's the reason why if you need somebody that can be there and ask questions like, what would be the reason for this and that? Because evidence is evidence. So, I mean, I'd be more than willing just to let you know to be there to ask them, to help. Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. For Ms. Bernie. You said uh, Dr. Wilcox is the only that you have. Who, she's not doing the spay neuter too, is she? Uh, we currently have one contract that continuing through the end of April, and then we will have no contract that's mm -hmm. either. We have a good plan for this. <coughs> <laughs> which only partially involves the slow and painful death of Dr. Wilcox. <laughs> Poor thing. It's her heart. To look. But yes, she, um, well, hopefully Dr. Lilly will be back, and then we, and like I said, I think we will have a couple of good applicants is the word that's in my ear. So well, that's good news. Okay. Uh, the tie-out outreach campaign.
That was you two. Uh, Mr. Marshall and me in the same time. At the beginning of uh, 2015, we started talking about how we can make people in Pima County aware that tie-outs are uh, prohibited by law in Pima County, even though they're still being sold in pet stores and big box retailers. Um, so this is kind of a hybrid of a uh, uh, prompt flyer, promotional flyer that we, we would release to the public saying, hey, make a video based on this. Um, and then also the fine print, the, the logistics that would go out that would detail the, the contest um, to people that were interested and, and wanted more information. Um, the, the reason why I bring this to the committee is I, I wanted some help, clarification of my own brain, um, down below primary objective. And I made a dozen copies of it. It's just on, it's on any member, that's everything? Okay. Um, I want direct information, so I, I call it direct information if, if my students have to put that in the video somewhere, if it has to be in text on the screen, or it has to be in the narration that plays in the video, what would it say? So in bold it says, titles are prohibited by law in Pima County. Um, I wanted it to be really clear and precise, but I also wanted to avoid making it punitive, like illegal, or go to jail, or cost money. <coughs> is also something that should be put on here. Animals that are constantly on the fight out have a tendency to become aggressive. Yeah, I wrote the, the dangers of tie-outs, and, and frankly, I, I came up with these. So the, the language again, strangulation, entanglement, neck and shoulder strain injuries, vulnerability to predators, inclement weather, and strain. Aggression. Huh? Aggression. Aggression. I, I have a question about the, about the tie-outs are prohibited by law in Pima County. Yeah. How old are the children that are going to be making this video? Um, that was another thing. I, I had it open to, to 14 to 19, which is the typical age of a high school student. Um, but there's some good middle schoolers out there making some good stuff. And then That's also, uh, uh, there's some college kids. I have kids at every site, not every college. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know why we wouldn't open every college kids either, because that would raise the caliber of the product. Yeah, exactly. Well, because I'm in the business, I know exactly what a tie-out is. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if people in the community knows what a tie know what a tie-out is. Tether. And, yeah. Yeah. So we put all the synonyms in there. Tie out, tying out a, a dog in Pima County. Tying out a dog. I mean, I'm just. You don't go with me. But then, no, but then we go with unattended because if you're, yeah. Long term. I, I think that it would be fine to just put tying out a dog or whatever, however you want to word it, in Pima County is prohibited by law, and down below you can clarify how long it is. I don't think that should be in the... Mm -hmm. in the no. Yeah. The other thing, too, is if you inundate people with too much information, then they just shut off. So we, we try to keep it as sweet and generalized as possible. Yeah, still concise. It's going to be a video? Yeah, yeah. So maybe you can show a dog on a tie-out and just leave it the way you have it. Yeah, that's the other thing. We don't want to do any... I don't, I don't know if we want to do the Sarah McLaughlin you know, try to appeal to the, the people that makes them sad and then they turn around and take action? I don't think you have. I mean, I've seen dogs tied up in videos that are just absolutely horrendous mm -hmm. in condition. But if you just vi show a visual of a dog with a chain mm -hmm. to a tree or a post, I don't think that We had a uh, state competition for Skills USA, which is a vocational group, Department of Education kind of coordinates all of that up in mm -hmm. Phoenix area. And um, Maricopa County uh, Animal Control was our, our customer this year. So we had to make a 30 second uh, promotional video, we had six hours, I had two teams of two go up. Um, they had 70 teams and they made 70 30 wow. second videos. Um, and the message was adopt, fix, love, or something like that about, about getting your animals fixed. The uh, criteria was tricky though because we were at the Phoenix Convention Center, we couldn't go outside of that city block. So no one had dogs in their projects. Mm -hmm. It was just all kind of this. Oh wow. wow. Yeah, the, all the concepts of dogs. So I thought we should we should be jumping on it and um, I've emailed in the last couple of days I've emailed about having a regional competition, very similar setup uh, next year for Pima County and then having all the programs, giving them advance notice. Yeah. If we have it in January I want to set in stone by September so they can they can all the teachers can write it into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. right. you're, you're talking this long range of ages. Mm -hmm. Preschool, or not preschool, uh, middle school, high yeah, school, yeah, yeah. would you have different levels of prizes? That all depends on the prizes. And that's okay. that's another thing that I, I bring to you. Um, with the contributions we receive for donations for outreach, um, can we spend that money? I know in a school I can't spend money that's donated to me on prizes to, to hand out to someone that's not a part of the organization. And I didn't know if it was similar here. I don't know. Same way. Mr. Uh, Mr. Marshall, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, we can certainly look into that. We partner with 
other government agencies and nonprofits all the time and share and there's rewards and awards. And if you put GoPro, iPad Mini, oh, yeah, twice yeah, as many yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we can, By the way, our, we have an IT freeze as well as the hiring freeze, so we can't buy any of that stuff. <laughs> but, but under the, under the, uh, the donation part of it, it wouldn't be even going through the camera in that sense, a freeze. Uh, uh, would sure. be $4,000 last month for outreach donations. Uh, uh, Mr. Marshall, Mr. Chair, actually, if it, if it comes into, the, if it shows up on this list, it goes into the county coffers, and you know, we have to play by county rules to expend it. Mm -hmm. Not that we can't do that. I mean, it, it, I don't. Nothing's coming to me that says we should be able to partner and come up with a fifty at this time. So we're, we're certain. Um, or gift cards. We've gotten around things by doing gift cards, like, right? To Best Buy, something electronic minded. Yes. You know, maybe it would be possible to put something out on Facebook or to to the community that. We're doing this, or, uh, you're doing this, and we need um, feedback from the community for donations to provide prizes for these kids instead of taking it through the county, right? If they brought in gift, you know, gift cards or uh, an iPad or something like that, that wouldn't go to the city coffers, I mean the county coffers, would it? Uh, <coughs> Ms. Hubbard, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, how do we put this together? If it's donated for that specific event, then that's what I have to go for. Even if it's donated to the county to be shared with on this partnering event, uh, we certainly, uh, Mr. Palmer, we have a big for, for your staff, but the fund developer might have some ideas as well on how to make this, uh, put this all together. Okay, great. Not a fund developer, the Mr. Matt. Karen Hollis, our fund developer. Developer. Could certainly take, take a, some possibly help on this. And I sent Karen a similar request for a different contest, for the same, yeah. same line of thinking, yeah. yeah. I can link to this. I think this is an amazing project. Yeah, and, and I mean, as long as everything's copyright free mm -hmm. and it's not it's not going to hurt anybody's feelings, um, you get 30 or 40 videos and then you strategically plan on when you're going to release them. Um, and the, another question, connection. I don't have connections to the TV stations, um, but I know that Bobby Rich commercial aired quite a bit uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, so putting those in, in some spots too, not just on social media, but also if they're exactly 30 seconds, they'll fit. Mm -hmm. We just have to find a way to get them aired for free. Uh, movie theater. The screening room wants to do anything with the community. Uh, they're they're a theater. And um, the loft, I, I haven't worked with them in three or four years, but um, they're usually pretty receptive to putting like, big screens up before the movies air. Um, they'll have information on there. And maybe they can donate some of that screen time. Well, Channel 4 and 13, and actually, the, all the channels have been very receptive to almost everything we've done. And so the other thing is, if, if it doesn't work by chance, that we can't use that money, which we probably probably can, but just assuming we can. There are other types of uh, uh, rescue groups that we can funnel the money through that I noticed that when the dog has an issue and they want to raise money for it, it goes all out through on Facebook and then people will donate to that fund specifically for that. So I mean, there's another option. Yeah, that's a great idea. We should even use the WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Another avenue another could be the news stations might say, hey, an educational project that these students are doing is this, and looking back at the videos. If we could slam to the so animals, yeah. just, I, I did I that. I did that years ago, and we got a lot of used equipment. And because we're the, the formats are switching so every so two much. years, there's a new format. Yeah. And not me. I use a great. It used to cost twenty thousand, mm -hmm. but the kids will look at it and go, "Yeah, it's not four yeah. K." You know. <laughs> <laughs> so they want new in the box, shrink wrapped. That's just what gets them. Even the advisors, the teachers at the schools and whatnot. Um, and I brought this up to Jay Ted, and there are all the advisors and teachers on board because, frankly, it's them handing out this and going, here's your project for the next two weeks in class scope. Um, uh, and then we could get the graphic design team to help out as well. Uh, at the state level, I was talking to um, 3D animation and game design. Mm -hmm. and, and those 3D kids, they feel like they're always omitted from video production, which is a little bit more popular. So they'd like to be incorporated too. That's <coughs> more of the dog being tied out on the chain because it looks like a cartoon. It doesn't look like you can't see the ribs and all mm -hmm. that, that sort of nasty stuff. Um, when you when you mentioned that we need to know what tiles look like and whatnot, um, one thing that's, that's been rattling around in my brain while I was writing this up was um, we can't say anything bad about Petco and PetSmart, you know, even Target or Walmart or the places where it's sold, mm -hmm. even in a parody form, because we, we don't want to stand them. Show what it is. Yeah. This is a yeah. tryout. This is not a on the shelves. Yeah. But not on the shelves. Right. And you make sure you don't even show the manufacturers. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, a, a clothesline, a rope is a tryout. And, and that's in the fine print so far. But we can. Okay. 
we can we can put more pictures in the design of the, the prompt the call of the audience and then I don't have any timetable yet set up I just did a uh, okay. you know when we announce that four weeks is when people should have everything filmed six to eight weeks is when they should turn it in mm -hmm. um, I've done all the logistics before of collecting videos and, and having them hosted online anonymous or just kind of there for everybody to screen through and there's no cost to that mm -hmm. it's, it's done by Vimeo which is a higher end YouTube okay. um, so that's already all set up mm -hmm. so what's the next step um, getting that direct information so um, whether we can use tying out a dog long term is prohibited by law in Pima County like get, getting that kind of down if we if we could because like I say that's that's what we want to hammer over the head of people and then say you know and then to expand upon that I thought a good angle would be tiles could be confusing because all the illegal popular pet stores and big box retailers are still permitted to sell them and I think that's kind of my like under the under the hood statement so so getting the specificity down as to what the tie out you're not supposed to do with it we we, we can get that from probably package enforcement though right the, the law about on the website it's leash laws. Yeah. And then people start going, well, leash, you know, you start you start adding all these extra elements into their thought process when they're doing the brainstorming. Okay, so two action items is what we're looking at is that, <coughs> and then whether we can get the money from the eight uh, six thousand that's in there. Yeah. Direct information, simple statement, concise, and then also the prizes, how we handle that. And if we believe the prize is probably that's going to have to go to the promotional player. Right. Otherwise, yeah. the kids are not going to be interested. That's how you shine. Yeah. Read through that. Please email me. I put my I put my personal email on the top. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there is no new business. There was a total of uh, 1,533 individuals gave $37,687 in donations just during the month of March. So it's way up there compared to where it used to be all the time ago. Super consistent, too, by the way. Yeah, it's been very consistent. Complaints and commendations, there were two complaints and one commendation received by staff in March. This is the last call to the audience. Hey, Brandon. Um, I wanted to add on a little bit about the, um, the social media concerns, and, and I think it's great that it's going to be revisited and reworked, and perhaps submitted for the next for the next um, meeting. But a particular concern that I noted, and is there is there actually a place that I can submit written concern with regards to this that could be considered? Which would be easier if you want to verbally do it yourself? I guess we could submit it to, directly to Mr. James, submit it to, okay. the, to the committee, and okay. it would be rather than Mr. James. Okay. Uh, but okay. could, could, you, could you give her your email address? Absolutely. Okay. I can get that from you after the meeting if you'd like. Um, particularly uh, the second paragraph where PAC Associates may not share information publicly released through blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it specifies here that information has to be released through the Facebook pages, but it seems to me that that paragraph should include publicly posted, not just Facebook information, because there are information that the volunteers use that are posted on the kennels, that are posted publicly with NPAC, that are public information, and those are items that are used by volunteers and you know people who are um, working to promote the dogs. Um, and the other paragraph that I had concerns with was one that Kristen already had said that it was going to be reworked, so that's not an issue. Um, and I agree also that a due process in here rather than strictly termination, something that's more clarified would be beneficial. Um, you know, if someone is in infraction, then you want to make sure that they know that it's an infraction with the policies and be able to uh, address that rather than just making an immediate dismissal. Unless, of course, it's something that's, that's very uh, severe. So that was my one concern, and my other concern was the uh, proposal for the animal control regulation surrender fees. Uh, we addressed some of that at the last meeting, and I just wanted to agree with uh, some statements that were made at that time about surrender fees and what that's going to impact. But one statement that I disagreed with with the last meeting was that somebody said that the Humane Society, when they enacted those impact fees, that there wasn't really a, a big uh, 
backlash from it. But that's not entirely true to the best of my knowledge. I have a lot of observations from when they first enacted it. I'm not sure about right now, but people that lived in that area were in an uproar because when people um, went to the Humane Society, found out that there was standard fees during that transition period, they were letting animals out right and left and the neighbors in that area were complaining tremendously at that time. I don't know if that's abated over the years, but it's certainly a concern that I think is, is on the horizon if you're looking at surrender fees. Um, and I understand that the part of this, this that the point of this is to offset the city and the not, you know, the contract that may be um, expiring and may not be renegotiated. But the reality is it's not going to backlash to the city because when people drive out here from the city, they get to pack, they find out about a surrender fee. Those animals are going to actually be dumped in Pima County, not back. They're not going to drive back to the city in Tucson to dump those animals when it starts to happen. Uh, a while back, and I, you forgive me on this, I may have missed something in one of the meetings because I did miss a couple of meetings, but there was some concerns brought up about retractable leashes, and uh, we were going to look at that and see if retractable leashes, if there was something that could be addressed with regards to um, ordinances that would um, allow for warning labels or things of that nature with them, but I don't know where that ever went or if it went anywhere. Over, the, over those time frames. So I'd like to see that be addressed at some point. And if it was resolved, I'm sorry I missed that. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Can I have a request? Can we put that on the next agenda? Retractable leashes. The retractable leashes and the leash law. Can you put that on the leash law? Yes. And the leash law. And the leash law. Okay. Um, any other individuals from the audience? Probably the audience. Okay. Announcements, schedules, and proposed agendas. Under this, I'd like to make kind of an announcement, some some feedback <clears throat> as to what occurred on the um, meeting that occurred. That a lot of volunteers and rescues, and fosters, and a lot of individuals attended with the city. Uh, there was probably oh gosh, almost a hundred people that went and. Uh, a lot had shirts, a lot didn't, and whatever. But nonetheless, the, it, was a, it was a packed audience. And w many of us submitted uh, the call to the audience as well. However, in the city, they don't necessarily give everybody the opportunity to talk. He, the mayor chooses who will talk. And so there were so many that, from, that wanted to talk about this IGA that had to do from the city and the county that uh, he chose two people out of probably the, the 50 that wanted to talk and then there was other individuals because there's a 30 minute time limit I guess that they've imposed on how much they can receive from the uh, audience. So there was two individuals that, that did talk and they did a really good job as far as explaining what it was that they felt was important and what was going on in this. Now. However, this, it appeared and it was pretty clear that the the only people that knew about what was going on was the acting uh, city manager. And the other individuals didn't know other than what people were writing to them and letting them know. And so uh, that she indicated that she was going to continue with the negotiations and then that's ongoing and then it's not, that hasn't occurred yet because it appeared as if we it already occurred because we were all saying that, look, we don't want this to happen, this can't happen, this is what's going to happen with the animals if it does happen. And uh, so the city attorney said, no, we'll be taking care of that. And it appears that you guys are talking now, and so we're very hopeful. But what's important, and, and I'll be sending something out to the volunteers indicating that maybe we shouldn't be going to the next meeting, but, but keep track, or you can go if you want, but we want to keep, uh, the pressure as far as letting them know the concern is still there. At least the volunteers and, and the rescue groups and everyone needs to, to keep letting them know that we know you're in negotiations but the pressure still needs to be there so that it just doesn't think that it's gone away as a result of last Tuesday. And uh, so 
I'm going to put something out as far as that I'm not requesting that everybody go this Tuesday, but there may be, in the next couple of Tuesdays, there may be a time when we need to go, depending upon what occurs in your negotiations, because we need to see what, what actually happens. Mm -hmm. But you can go if you want. I mean, anybody can go. Nancy? Um, he can also call. There's the, the mayor and, and council com comment line, and, you know, crash the system. It's, it's, you know, they're going to hear about it, and uh, I think that's, that's critical. If you can't be out there, or people can't get out there, tell people to call. I did. And email. And email. And, email. and they, they received a lot of correspondence. Uh, oh, I was going to say, at HB 2150, that was vetoed by our governor, mm -hmm. they had thousands and thousands of calls. Um, emails and it did break down there. Yeah. So if we're that passionate, we should do the same thing to city to some. Make sure you tell them you're a registered voter. Well, one of the one of the things that one of the things that we did say is even if you don't live in the city of Tucson, you spend your money in the city of Tucson. I know most of us do. Just to let the the individuals that represent them know that there are a lot of people that do care. Chair, and members of the committee, thank you for this, this uh, opportunity to clarify that, that we have been meeting, just not as regularly as we would like to be, since August for the cities and towns. And it had been a while since we had a meeting. But we did have one today, and that's what I was referring to, those, those, those discussions and those negotiations. And the city of, of Tucson came out, and the, the tone of the whole meeting was, was very positive, I felt. Of course, uh, the director, Dr. Garcia, is here. And, Christian was present and they were present at the committee as well today with a, a lot of positive action items moving forward uh, and with, with all, the full intent to make something, to make this pack work and the new building going to work and it's going to be a regional process and those kind of comments were coming out. Uh, so I, I, I just, so you're, you're exactly right in your session, Mr. Chair. Uh, discussions continue and we're working forward in positive manner. Cool. Well, we're all very hopeful. Yes, sir. Just for clarification for that, this was a regular city council meeting, right? Correct. Did you say the date? It was last uh, well, Tuesday. Was Tuesday. <coughs> Tuesday. Okay. Seven. Seven. Thank you. Sure. Anybody have any announcements about anything going on? We're having the our annual putting on the dog. Is coming up May 1st, if anybody's interested. It's a lot of fun, a lot of food, a lot of alcohol. This <laughs> is a good event. And if you're interested, you can go onto the Humane Society website and, and look it up. I think we're going to never win. The expo, by the way, last week I heard from a lot of friends of mine that right. went. It was just packed and great. And they ran out of dogs and stuff, I heard. We did. We had nothing. So, a lot of positive stuff. You guys found that list with three truck loads? Yes. We did 26 adoptions and had to refill three times. And I did not bring home the raw water. <laughs> and we had a basketball star adopt uh, Canelo. And uh, that's what I heard last night about. Although Kathy didn't know that he was a basketball star. <laughs> That's all right, Captain. <laughs> anyway, uh, is there anything? Let me see. The last thing we have is the next meeting is May 21st. And with that, we have a motion to adjourn. The meeting will be here. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I address this? Um, does anybody know how long this construction is going to be going on? I'm Brian Sonko. Okay, start that. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, it was, I was just amazed. Oh, it took me almost a half an hour to get yeah. from the freeway to yeah. there, and I was thinking yeah. if that's the case. Well, they, they just, they just paid the the Grant, the city did, yeah. from yeah. Silver Bell up to almost Los yeah. Shannon. Mm -hmm. And they didn't go into the county, which, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> if they would have gone into the county a little bit. They didn't go even an inch into the county. <laughs> and so, uh, and now the next thing that we're going to be dealing with is um, 
they're, they're going to be widening the county, the senior county, I don't know which one is going to widen Silverbell all the way up to uh, the Ray. Really? And then all, the next step is to Ruth Rock. Now, I'm just kind of curious if, it, if I could ask, why, why, you know, it would be really good if they could widen it to pack, at the, and that would be about the same time they open up a new facility, you'd have a brand new program <laughs> that comes right to pack. Okay. With that, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Adjourn. Adjourn.